The film's plot is set in 2067, when the world has been irreparably damaged by climate change. Every type of plant life has gone extinct. The amount of oxygen in the air has decreased dramatically due to the loss of plant life. To survive, humans must purchase artificial oxygen. 99% of the world has gone dark. People die from suffocation in such conditions. Just one city in Australia has survived, and it is all because of a company named Chronic Warp Company, which manufactures synthetic oxygen. Yet, over time, artificial oxygen causes a deadly illness known as the sickness. Mankind has only a few years before it becomes extinct. Ethan White resides in the Australian city. He and his friend Jude are mechanics at the Chronic Warp firm. The company is also working around the clock to find a cure for the disease and a way to save the world. Ethan's wife, Xanthi, also has the disease. Ethan works tirelessly day and night to acquire enough money to purchase her better oxygen. Regina Jackson, the Chronic Orp's CTO of Particle Research, summons Ethan and Jude to her office one day as they are working in the tunnel. She introduces herself to the two and warns them that humanity is set to perish in a few years if conditions do not change. She then reveals that Ethan is the only one who can save everyone and preserve mankind. Ethan feels perplexed and distrustful of her. Regina, on the other hand, invites him to visit their laboratory. The lab is equipped with heavy machinery. Billy Mitchell, the lab doctor, introduces himself to Ethan and takes a brief glance at Ethan's wrist device. They then tell him that this experiment was started by Ethan's father, Dr. Richard White, 20 years ago. The apparatus in front of them is a time machine known as the Chronicle. In the machine's initial experiment, they had to send radio waves through it to see what was on the other side. They deduced from it that 407 years later, in 2474, the world would have enough flora to retain adequate oxygen in the air and support human existence. People begin to believe that if humanity survives several hundred years later, it is likely that they will have discovered solutions to all of their world's problems. Yet, the experts were baffled by such unexpected behavior. The waves they had released had returned and rebuilt. As they translated it, they discovered that someone from the future had sent them the message, send Ethan White. So Regina and the rest of the crew want to send Ethan into the future to bring back the cure. Ethan is completely taken aback. He doesn't believe them and feels Regina is bluffing. Furthermore, he does not want to leave his sick wife and travel into the future. As a result, he refuses to assist. Later, Ethan and Jude visit a cafe and buy crisp oxygen. Jude tries to persuade Ethan to carry out the plan and help save humanity, but Ethan laughs at him, insisting that he does not want to be like his father. Ethan dislikes his father since he is never there for him. His father left home and went missing 20 years ago, and his mother was murdered when he was a baby. Since then, he has been raised by Jude whom Ethan regards as both his elder brother and his best friend. He blames his father for abandoning his mother to finish the project, and he does not want to follow in his footsteps and abandon his sick wife. But Jude attempts to persuade him that the only way he can save his wife is to find a cure. Ethan recalls his ninth birthday when his father gave him a strange box as a present. When he places his hands inside the box, a device clamps onto his wrist and causes him to bleed. Richard had fitted his child with a permanent hand gadget. Despite the fact that it has been several years, Ethan is unaware of its use. Later that night, Ethan tells Xanthi everything that happened throughout the day, and she begs him to leave. The next morning, Ethan writes on a metal flower, I shall find my way back to you and sets it next to Xanthi. He then goes to Regina's office and advises her that if he can only find one solution, 
they must first propose it to Xanthi. Regine accepts and returns him to the laboratory. Dr. Mitchell shows him the clothes he must wear before entering the machine. When they begin to outline the mission to him, Ethan realizes they need a strategy. They have no idea what he will see or who he will meet on the other end, but once he is in the suit, they give him an AI device called the Archie. Archie will always show Ethan's vitals from the lab. That will also help him find his way around. Eventually, they inserted him into the machine. Inside, Ethan flies across time at breakneck speed. He plummets from the sky and lands in an unknown wilderness. Because the air friction causes his suit to catch fire, he quickly slips out of it. Suddenly he looks about and is taken aback by the beauty of nature. He realizes that the world has changed dramatically. The plants and natural oxygen have been restored. He walks to the spot directed by Archie and discovers a bunker entrance of some kind. But it's a skeleton that draws his attention just in front of the door. Its skull has a bullet hole in it. He also looks at the identification tag on it and is surprised to see his own name on it. Ethan is the owner of the skeleton. Ethan also finds the skeleton's Archie and listens to the final recording on it. He shoots Ethan after hearing a man say that this is the only way. Right then, the device's power is turned off. He is terrified, knowing that this is his fate. He notices the skeleton's wrist gadgets all of a sudden. It's identical to Ethan's. Only the light in the skeleton's device flashes green, whereas Ethan's has always been red. He builds a fire and eats wild berries that night. The berries turned out to be poisonous. Ethan vomits and becomes unconscious. After a while, Ethan awakens and is surprised to see Jude in front of him. As it turned out, the lab noticed Ethan's vitals dropping and believed he was suffering from a toxic reaction. As a result, they immediately dispatched Jude into the future with the necessary medicine to save him. Later, Ethan and Jude find that his skeleton remains there, indicating that his fate hasn't changed. They then employ Archie to find another door. A device scans Ethan's eye and grants them access. A monitor welcomes him as they enter. It requests a DNA sample from him. When he receives it, his wrist device activates, causing him to bleed. It turns green after the blood test. The lights in the room turn on, and they realize they are in Chronicorp's lab 407 years later. The time machine is also in front of them. Jude is overjoyed since they now have the equipment to travel back in time. But Ethan is skeptical, arguing they haven't changed anything and that he will die just like the deceased Ethan. Ethan studies the system log and discovers a holographic recording made by his father, who disclosed is that the time machine was originally designed to collect oxygen data on the future planet, and then send it back in time. Yet, when his father first started the time machine, he received a message asking him to send his kid to the future. Despite his reservations, he chose to do so and performed a DNA verification here for Ethan. Eventually, Ethan and Jude realize that the time machine will be unable to transfer them back because its charge is nearly depleted after 407 years. Worse, activating the lab causes a breakdown in its nuclear power car, threatening to unleash a nuclear disaster in just four hours. This means they must devise a way to repair the time machine and return to before the disaster. They were running out of time and needed to act quickly. Outside, they are astounded to witness a damaged metropolis covered in lush vegetation but devoid of residents, implying that the planet starts to restore itself after human extinction. Human bones may be found all over the place. As Ethan gets at his wife's house, he discovers her bones, which causes him to despair. Jude tries to persuade him to return to the past because the cure does not appear to exist even in the future world. But Jude's remarks make Ethan suspicious. He then turns on the resting Archie and plays the recording again. 
Recognizing Jude's voice, and it appears Jude is the one who shot him, Jude points his gun at Ethan, vehemently protesting that he would shoot him. Ethan finally decides to complete the assignment first, so they manage to restore the power curve, and then return to the lab with mutual efforts. Now that the Chronicle system is operational, they should be able to return to the past. They merely need to wait 37 minutes until portal launch. When the countdown reaches zero, the portal will tether to 2067 for approximately 30 seconds. Yet, Ethan discovers that his corpse remains behind the same door, implying that they haven't made any changes to the future. In order to discover the truth, Ethan removed the battery from his current Archie and placed it in the rusted one. In this manner, he receives access to another film, in which Ethan is promised that his future self will be killed by Jude. Jude then explains that there is no way to change the future, and that he is attempting to protect Ethan. Finding it difficult to accept, Ethan locks his brother in a room and then plays back his father's holographic journal from the day he died. He soon discovers a conversation between the Chronic Orb's CTO, Regina Jackson, and his father. It is stated that Ethan's father intended to use the time machine to save all humanity by discovering the cure, whereas the CTO only intended to leave from the dying time with a select few. However, Whichever plan they choose, someone must travel into the future and turn on the time machine to safely send living matter through time. It requires an operational link from both sides. The CTO murdered Ethan's father instantly in rage. She then urges Jude to murder Ethan's mother and be his guardian so that one day they may use Ethan's bracelet to gain access into the future. Ethan is astonished. The man he believed was his brother turns out to be the one who murdered his mother and plans to kill him as well. He also realizes that he has misinterpreted his father, who did not abandon the family on purpose, believing that Regina intends to send a select few into the future. Ethan attempts to shut down the time machine, but Jude Rush is to stop him and reveals that he's been entrusted here by the CDO to ensure that Ethan is sent in time to fix the power outage. Yet, Jude has formed strong emotional relationships with Ethan throughout the years. He feels guilty seeing his brother-like companion in such a predicament due to him. As a result, instead of murdering Ethan, he shoots himself in rage and sadness. Ethan is determined to carry out his father's final wish, which is to find the cure and save the dying world. He looks at the monitor and sees the very first message written by his father. He deduces that he sent the message send Ethan White. Then he codes in the message again and sends it back in time, along with a slew of other items. Meanwhile, in the year 2067, the CTO and a group of elite, selected individuals wait expectantly for the time machine to be activated. To their horror, the time machine brings back hundreds of extinct species, as well as a copy of Ethan's father's recorded murder. Ethan destroys the time machine shortly after, resulting in the collapse of the Toast scheme. Finally, the CTO is arrested as a result of the murder. Plants carried back to 2067 are being cultivated in order to replenish the earth. Ethan's wife receives a flower present from him as well, and she understands his decision. Despite the fact that Ethan must live in the future world alone, he buries Jude and forgives him. A butterfly catches his attention and leads him back to the same entrance where Ethan is relieved to realize that his future self's body has vanished. He dashes outdoors to see what's going on and is relieved to discover a futuristic, eco-friendly metropolis, as opposed to the deserted one from before. His decision had an impact on humanity's fate.